Hey, welcome to another episode of It Resolves. My name is Kevin. My name is Will. Welcome back. Thanks for tuning in, listening, and or watching wherever you're doing it, how you're doing it. And as always, of course, you can find us on all our links down below. I'm going to shorten it eventually. Yeah, that's okay. Just because... We talked about needing to shorten it, and then we didn't shorten it. Well, well there we you go. Well, there you go. That's our... Uh, <laughs> that's Hold on, my, my pop filters being funny yeah that's it there you go there you go everybody that's the shortened version live that's uh that was good that's, that's solid what we call the rough draft version one. <laughs> rough draft. links down below <laughs> anyway yes thank you Welcome. um we encourage you to check us out on all social media sites including youtube uh facebook twitter patreon everything etc uh, it feels kind of weird not saying all that stuff right it does a little bit i, I feel know. like we need to also twitch uh, with alex and parks obviously oh, you guys yeah. know about them by now uh if you don't them, you're missing they're, out there's some there's some fun chaps they're fun it. lads yeah yeah some fun lads some fun lads um it's not bad right good pretty job, good, good job. i can do things um guys today Whew. is a part of our breakdown week yes. or breakdown weeks uh where we go through all the formats talk about them and break them down uh we've got five huh. points that we go is that through. what we that's what we do gotcha. it's weird right that's clever. sort of that's like clever what the name i understand was. the title now yeah got it in case you didn't get it before i didn't i thought um, I'm trying to make it easy for everybody, you know. It's just good. in case. I like that it's all out there. It's fun to see. That's um, fine. Uh, only the best creative minds here on it results. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah we, well, that's why we were the the last two on the island. That's true. We we survived long. The now. it resolves island. You uh you posit a title Survivor. for a uh, for a segment every week. Yeah. And if yours was the least creative, you, you were eaten. <laughs> So this is just devolving into like <laughs> that's what happened, and then we got rescued by um, Marshall Sutcliffe. Yes, <laughs> who is tall, which means we can float on atop of him. He can walk on the bottom of the ocean. I was and thinking we can he came with on. like I don't know a chopper or something. Wizard sent the mm-hmm. van. I don't know. No, no, he's just tall. <laughs> it's a sent the van. <laughs> sent the van. I just got a picture of the mystery machine, like <laughs> LSV. He's just driving. Cracking wise in the passenger seat. <laughs> just a mad Paul in the back just going like, God, please shut up. Yeah. <laughs> like, Paul's taking a nap. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, who's that? Who's the dude that did the... um? They used to do the, the fun videos, uh, Walking the Plains, maybe? I, I know you know what, what I'm talking about. I know exactly what you're talking about. The I guy who wore the cloak. Name. He wore the cloak. Um, I remember specifically watching I, his conspiracy draft video with yeah, like a group of I have kids. seen. It was awesome. Like each of those videos, and then a bunch of other ones he's done for Wizards. And yeah. I cannot remember his name. I can't either. Wow. He's a really cool guy. We suck. Uh, yeah. Man, he's really. Whoever cool. you are, if you're watching, which you're not, you don't know that. You know who you are. We're on the internet now. We're on the internet now. Um, we have subscribers more than one yay um (laughs) no guys we do have (laughs) all right we do have the legacy breakdown today but before that um instead of the random card of the day we always have our kiki weekly on the friday episodes today i got one that i really like but that has not really been seen played in a competitive way which is weird because the resulting you know ending creature is actually really good um on turn two we'll talk about it we'll talk about it so i've got my criticisms that's fair um so here's the here's the deal guys Mm -hmm. this is Mm -hmm. sort of a two card combo but the first card can be sort of replaced there's two of them that you can use so the first card is either manamorphose or burning tree emissary um and the reason you have to use those is because they basically refill your mana pool yep uh for free so you get to play them on two and then get two more mana to play something else that something else happens to be Talara's Battalion. Yeah, um, great card. Pretty straightforward combo, but if you don't know... Oh, my elbow just slipped. It was, it was smooth. Um, okay, if you don't fine. know what the Battalion is, it is a 4-3 for one and a green, which sounds great oh, already. Oh, yeah. Away. It also has Trample, Ooh, saucy. which makes it even better. However, it has the caveat that you can only play it if you've already played another green spell this turn. Hence, the Burning Tree Emissary or Mana Mor- Morphos. Yeah. So... It's basically, if you have the two cards, you end up with either a 2-2 and a 4-3, or you are drawing a card and then playing a 4-3. Or a 4-3 and a card, which that's pretty good. Both are very good, right? But why do you think that this hasn't been 
competitively played. So, um, biggest thing that comes to mind is there's one format you play this in, yep. modern yep. specifically. Um, and to me, there's maybe two decks that could go in and two decks only. Um, Which are? Uh, zoo. Yeah. And then just some kind of red green value. I so, agree. So my deck for it would be Naya Zoo. Yeah, that's my. That's exactly because Burning Tree thought. is already played there. Metamorphose, mm-hmm. not so much, but Burning Tree already is. Right. So you could sort of slot this in and give it a shot. However, you run so few lands. That's that... the thing, and you you're counting on having both of the cards in your hand. At exactly, the same time, that's my point, and that's not that can potentially slow you down. So my point with mentioning you run few lands, I'm talking yeah. like 15, 17, maybe in those decks there's uh, very it's pretty few. low there's very few um the lady i do say lady the lady i saw pilot the <laughs> most recent naya zoo deck had like very very few lands really it's kind of surprising but um yeah she she was against some kind of slesnia flicker i don't know um <laughs> but you you run so little because it is an aggro deck that right. i'm saying if you don't have burning tree if you don't have that free mana you, there's probably a few turns you might not be able to cast exactly Talara's Battalion. and it becomes a dead card right and not only that but talar's italian dies to what Can't bolt there you go it dies to bolt so um, you get a four three body with trample which is hefty yeah but it dies to bolt yep and i feel that the the casting stipulation is too strong i think to warrant here's not playing other things here's my other argument Mm -hmm. um what else does the battalion die to that you can think of oh let's see uh fatal push that's the big one so half yeah but i mean everything does yeah but so my big one is fatal push which is hitting almost any deck that can run it in modern at this point and it doesn't need the revolt trigger to actually hit it just already hits so like Exactly. It's so easily removed mm-hmm. at this point in in the meta game that it just doesn't feel worth it. Yeah. Like there's other things you'd rather be doing, like just flooding the board with more things mm-hmm. instead now, of having this dead card. That being said, Burning Tree is such a great value card. And oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. at the end of the day, they do path your or they bolt, push, whatever they do to your battalion, you're still left with either a two two or a yeah. card up from Anamorphose. Sure. Which I mean, you never want things to get removed, but your stuff is gonna get removed. So yeah. It's better, again, Agro Principles episode, yeah. it's better to make them have the thing. You're exactly right. So this is good, and I'm sure that it's it's not the most useless combination no, you can not. throw in a Naya deck. But. No, but I do think, I mean, again, in a Naya Zoo deck, you're going to be running Burning Tree, not the Manamorphose. The Manamorphose just doesn't right. forge your game plan um, Precisely. enough, and Precisely. so you have to play the Burning Tree, which is fine. Um, oh yeah you play it anyway regardless of whether you play the battalion i know Mm -hmm. it's played in all the deck lists for the most part Mm -hmm. um so it's really just watch switching out a slot for the battalion and it just feels like there's better plays to me i think Um, so while that being said uh, curd ape i don't know what would come out for battalion exactly but that being said i would encourage people to give it a shot um why not i mean it's a it's a very strong card at the end of the day yes and and if this comes out on Turn two, you've got six power on the board, yes. four of which tramples, which exactly. is that's not bad ever. That so. is amazing. Yeah. But again, easily removed. So yes. give it a shot. See what you guys think. Mm-hmm. Um, this isn't by any means some hidden combo. Most people know about this no, one. Sure. However, uh, we just thought we'd bring it to light yeah, up a little bit more. Generates bring a conversation. Which Look is at that. Nice. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> All right. So All right. Uh, legacy breakdown time. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's break it down. So we got our five points. We're going to talk about what legacy is the history of legacy okay legacy in its current state oh, okay where and how you can play it you and then need. how you can get better at legacy um mm-hmm. and we've already talked a lot about how you can get better at a format is just practice 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 of course this one i have a little bit more to add to that uh more so than the past two formats okay. standard and, and modern. interested to hear yeah so Wait first of all me, what is legacy legacy my friend is an eternal format um, it is the kind of middle ch- stepchild, the redheaded stepchild <laughs> of the Eternal formats, where it is older than modern, mm-hmm. but it is younger than vintage. Correct. Um, and it, it kind of gets uh, swept under the rug a little bit. However, in the Pro Tour, in the coming years, we will see more of Legacy because it's going to be a featured event. It's going to count for Pro Tour points. They're going to play it in the PT. Yes, which, which I'm cool. very excited about. If any of you legacy players out there are excited about that, let us know. Yep. Obviously, you should be because it's yes. on the Pro Tour. <laughs> yep, and it, um, it, it marks really the the first step where yes, uh, 
cards become really expensive. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it's it's your first step into uh, people like you invested how much in that deck? Yeah, so like the thing about it is standard, you invest a few hundred dollars into a yeah. deck. Modern. Yeah. Hitting the thousand dollar mark, you like you've you got a few cards in there that are going to be upwards of fifty to a hundred dollars. There's a few sure. in there. Definitely. However, with Legacy, mm-hmm. you will be spending thousands mm-hmm. of dollars for the most part. There are some exceptions, as always, but yeah, you will be th- you will be spending multiple thousands of dollars potentially on that, decks. Yeah. Um, just the land base alone with dual yeah. lands, things like that. Uh, Force of Will being a very prominent card is highly expensive. That's hundred bucks easy. Um, so is that all you think? Force. Yeah, for sure. Mm. Um, in fact, I'm actually 100% positive it's below 100. <laughs> mm. um, at least the reprint uh, in Eternal Masters yeah, is. The other reprinted. one depends on condition. So something to know. Well, that's true. Um, I, I did have to think about yeah. the printing. Yeah. The older one. I'm... Huh. I don't know exactly how much the older one is, but I know it's around there. I'll tell you um, why. I'm curious now, guys. <laughs> So, yeah, you're exactly right. So it's sort of in the middle between the vintage and the modern formats. Um, It is the Eternal format that basically doesn't... I mean, Eternal formats don't rotate or anything like that, but it does have the ban list. It's the biggest... It's not the biggest ban list, but it the difference between it and vintage is that ban list Mm -hmm. is really what it comes down to. And things on the ban list include some of just the most powerful cards, things like the Power 9. I know Yawgmoth's will uh yagmas bargain i believe is in there um there's a fairly extensive list it's not hugely long but there's a list that you can find online we might link it down below actually yeah, um i've got it here and it's it's pretty similar to of course uh your vintage list you're exactly right yagmas bill yagmas bargain uh vampiric tutor Talarian academy tinker time walk time vault strip mine skull clamp Power nine, Mox, Flash, Fast Bomb, blah blah blah, yes. blah blah. It's so, almost identical. Yeah, and so basically, what you get is not quite as fast of a game that you're going to find in Vintage, but also not as slow a game as you find in Modern. So you're exactly right in that aspect too. It falls sort of on the in between. Yes. Um, but it is very powerful. It's a very intricate oh, format. Yes. Um, you really, really need to know your stuff when you play Legacy. Mm-hmm. A lot of the interactions, you really have to base it off of just sort of assuming that your opponent has things. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes you get to know that your opponent has things with Gitaxian Probe, things like that, Sure, which is legal in, in Legacy. Uh, um, probe. Probe. Such a good card. It is. It's one I'm of the so best. mad it's gone in Modern. Um, not really. It makes sense, but... I'm kind of mad, too. Are you? I, I 100% understand, agree yeah. with, and believe that Wizards made the right choice. Yep. But... <laughs> It makes so many decks just a little bit worse. It does, and, and it's that's, a little frustrating. And that's the thing: so many decks, a little bit worse. It just yeah. we could, it makes I could talk at all length. combo decks a little bit worse. I could talk at sure. length, so we'll we'll save we'll slave, save that one for a whole other episode because uh, that could be a whole episode. But amen. Um, no, it it's a very powerful, very intricate format. Yeah. You have to be on it and know what your opponent is is potentially Correct. holding up. Um, Definitely. And we'll go into some of the namesake cards and some of the the staples uh, towards the end on this, but Mm -hmm. that's basically where we're at with that. So, a little bit of history. Okay. Um, I looked this up a little bit ago and tried to figure out exactly the timeline for Legacy. Mm -hmm. Basically, it's it was created in July of 1997, so very early on, only Mm -hmm. a few years in, three four years in, it was created. Um, Four years in. Originally, it had the exact same restricted list that Vintage did, so they were very similar in that way. However, uh, its own sort of independent ban list started in 2004, uh, where they tried to slow it down a little bit, give it sort of that in-between feel, Um, although before that, Modern obviously was not a thing. They just wanted to slow it down in comparison to Vintage. Okay. Okay. Um, So that's where the ban list really got its start was in 2004. Um, Since then, obviously, it's been extended quite a bit yeah uh but that happens <laughs> true true um and it's a very as we said intricate format and by that point you see a lot of variety in the deck list um, oh yeah so moving to sort of current times for legacy i've got a few deck lists and some breakdowns for you here so i i'll go into aggro control and combo decks as a whole first okay. and say that aggro makes up about 38 percent of the metagame okay yeah. um that makes sense. Control me. decks about thirty six percent, so fairly even there. 
And then a little bit less than that at 26%, we see most of the combo decks. Okay. However, if you look at that overall, uh, it's actually pretty even, right? Like yes. you get a pretty wide spread of decks, Very which is so. something that you don't always see in something like standard. It's usually pretty even, straightforward. Even modern, is, even modern is mostly primarily aggro. You're correct. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so yeah, some some fairly even spreads there, and some mm -hmm. examples of some decks. Give me some aggro decks. What do you think? Oh, in in Legacy, I mean, of course Delver has to be in there. Delver's in there. Delver's in everything. Um, is Legacy Elves still a thing? Legacy Elves is still a thing, although probably not mm. quite as good as it used to be. Yeah, I'd imagine. Merfolk, to that point, is also in. Um, let's see, what could be some other ones? Um, Tinker's out, so is there cheating out Blightsteel at all? Um, thing? combo decks. That's more combo end. Fair, fair point. Is Affinity a thing in Affinity Legacy? Affinity is, I believe... A thing? I don't actually know. Um, I'm not 100% positive on that, but I believe it is. It's more, if I'm not mistaken, the the mud deck, as it's called, is of course. is a little more on the beating mud. end of things. It's not necessarily affinity uh, at its at its core, but I see, I see. Um, there are artifact-based decks, obviously. Uh, the other big yeah. one that I was noting is Dredge. Uh, Dredge being highly competitive in, in Legacy. Um, control decks. Obviously, Grixis Control being in, like, every format ever. <laughs> yeah. Um, Bug is sort of a mid-range control deck. Hmm. Uh, a lot of them run... There's Leovold Bug and there's Shardless Bug. There's a lot of variations. But it runs sort of the grindy mid-range game uh, while having those controlling aspects with things like Force of Will and stuff like that. Sure. So it's one of the best decks I like a lot. Um, another control deck, which I, I think is just really interesting, is the Land Control deck. Land um, control deck, yeah. It's just a toolbox deck filled with awesome lands. It's a weird one. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'm it's super good. Without a list. Yeah. I, I mean, know the deck. I've seen it played. It, yeah. It's hard to... It's not hard to explain, but it's lengthy. Yeah. It's... If you haven't seen a deck list for that, I would encourage you to go look it up. Yeah. Look look up it, land control. It's, it, it's cool. I know I had this thought early on in Magic. I was like, could I make a deck just out of lands that's mm -hmm. actually good? Turns out you can. Um, it's yeah. a very good deck, so mm -hmm. definitely encourage you to check that out. And then things like Stoneblade is also in that sort of ah, high end for the control. Um, just such a good deck. Stoneforge um, and yeah. good blades. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so on the combo end of things, the first one that comes to mind. I mean. Storm. It's always there. Uh, Storm, ah, Storm being one of the best decks, uh, best combo decks, I will say, uh, yeah. in Legacy. No, you can say best deck. Storm, <laughs> Storm is pretty epic. Although with Yagmas will banned, um, it helps, but still, yeah, yeah. I mean, you still Pass in Flames is still like it is. That feels a little slow, but even but come on. I mean, it's still good. It's still good, guys. Uh, it show and tell. Everything again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, show and tell being a very prominent deck. Ah, yeah, um, that's a cool one reanimator obviously that's where you can get some of the very crazy reanimator decks yeah um in addition it's sort of on the land end of things we have dark depths which is just one of the coolest combos yeah. we've talked about it on the kiki mm -hmm. weekly before it if you like 2020s for basically free yeah go for it, it might be for you you can do that Could um be. if you got the money to fork out for it <laughs> um it's very expensive uh yeah. but hey it is what it is um, so that's sort of a breakdown of the meta as of right now. Okay. Um, question so far. Um, no, it seems uh, seems true to form. Yeah. That's what I was expecting. It's about normal. Um, so really quickly, I want to talk about the top 10 staples in Legacy. Staple cards? Staple individual cards. Cool. Cool. Okay. All right. I like this. I like this. Okay. Give me a few thoughts. Just a few that you think would be in the top 10. Uh, force. Okay. Um, I'm going to say Path. Path? No, because that's not in... Right? It'd be swords. It'd be swords. Which isn't in the top 10, that's by the way, way, either way. But. Oh, wow, interesting. <laughs> um, so, Force... Um, I'm going to say... Oh, is that more of a vintage thing? I'm, hmm. Death Rite is one of my... Okay, would be that's one good. Of my includes. Um, Gitaxian Probe, yep. Force. Death Rite, Gitaxian Probe, Force of Will... Um, may, maybe Liliana of the Veil, also. But again, that might be more of the vintage thing I'm thinking of. 
All right, so here's the deal. Cocktail. You're pretty close. Okay. You got a few of them. Okay. We'll go over it uh, from 10 down to 1. Okay. So in 10th place, we have Delver. Oh, naturally. Oh, also, I should note, there's a theme to these cards. We'll talk about it after we get through them, but just oh, okay. see if you notice. Number 10, Delver. Okay. Yeah. Number 9, Flusterstorm. Mm. One of the best counter spells, if you do not know, Should've, one yeah. mana counter spell if they don't, if unless the opponent pays one and it has storm. Um, yeah. So really good. Uh, number eight, days. Okay, which yeah. I think is that a really sense. cool one. Mm -hmm. uh, number seven, bolt, lightning bolts up there. Sure. Six, Gataxian probe. You were right there. That makes sense. Number five, surgical extraction. Ah. Which I think is interesting. Um, I think the Death Shadow it deck, was. because I do believe there's a Legacy Death Shadow deck. Yeah, there uh, is. I believe it's running know. around there. I don't know how good it is, but I know there's a Legacy yeah. Death Shadow. Yeah. Uh, number four, Death Rite. You were right there. Cool. Number three, Force of Will, obviously. I mean. Number two, Ponder. Oh. And duh. number one, Brainstorm. I was going to say. Yeah. How did I not? <laughs> did you notice the theme? Kevin, are most of those blue? Yeah, all but three. <laughs> Um, blue is rampant in Legacy. Well, yeah. So, you, I'm sure you've got a point. <laughs> I'm going to let you make it. I'll say my piece. Okay, so here's the deal, guys. We've talked about what's the best color of magic before. Mm -hmm. This is the reason it's blue. I'm sorry, it just is. It is. Um, it's played everywhere in the formats where anything goes. And so, it just, it sort of proves the point. It's sort of part of where that comes from, uh, that being that blue is the best. And yeah. It just gets free stuff and it gets to do everything. So. Yes, not only that. So the cards we mentioned, um, Force of Will, Ponder, mm -hmm. Brainstorm, Cataxium Pro. So all of these cards are not only so simple in their design. Yeah. I'm going to say that. Uh, they help the fluidity of yeah. your deck so much more. Uh, excluding maybe Force of Will, but Force of Will is just a super efficient free yeah. card. Yeah. So... Just exile a thing from your hand and counter something. Awesome. Pay a life, too. Oh, that's right. Pay one life, exile a blue card. Has to be blue, and then yeah. counter thing. Um, but ponder, brainstorm. Just fine cards. Search yeah. for stuff. Yeah, yeah. Get taxing pro. Get information, replace it. Mm -hmm. Like these are, none of these cards are back breaking. No. Right. But they. Well, maybe Force of Will, arguably. But. Uh, it, and Flusterstorm. But I mean, other than that. Flusterstorm, yes. Flusterstorm is a nightmare for obviously Storm. But yeah. Flusterstorm. Yeah, all, all of these things just seek to improve your deck's, like, its ability to deck. Yeah. Right. It, it digs you through your deck. It gives you information about your opponent. Yeah. It gives you outs in the way of Flusterstorm and Force of Will mm -hmm. that you don't actually have to leave up mana for. for uh, yeah. Flusterstorm, you do. But. Force of Will, you don't, and Flesh or Storm literally costs one, so like yeah. it doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, days, you don't have to leave up mana for. Yeah, like, don't you bounce islands? You bounce an island. Yeah. Um, and it's a good pitch to Force of Will if they've got an excess of mana. So, like, True. all of these cards synergize really well with so many decks because they just get you through your deck. They get you yes. to your answers, they get you to the cards you need to win the game. Yep. Um, they're not the game winning cards. They're the ones that get you to the win. Except for maybe Storm, but well, yeah. excluding Brain Freeze. Um, so yeah, that's yeah. just a thought. Just throwing this out there. Blue is really good, and it's everywhere in Legacy. So, little warning, spoiler. If you do not like not being able to play your things, or you just don't <laughs> like blue, Legacy might not be for you. Might not be your thing. Maybe that's not. okay. That's but if, standard. if you like... Red's super good in standard right now. It's so okay for that. That's okay. <laughs> I got my opinions about that. But if, if you do like the gritty mind, like very analytical turns, yeah. like it's might be for you. And that's the thing that we mentioned sort of towards the beginning of the episode, that it is a very intricate format. There's a lot of things you have to think about. And Force mm -hmm. of Will, Days, these are the cards that make you have to think about things, Naturally. right? Like, cards. because... They're not leaving mana open. They don't have to. They yeah. do have counters, though, um, and they can play them very assume efficiently. That. So, yeah, assume yeah. that they have counters. Um, that's just something you have to assume. Mm -hmm. um, depending on the deck, if you know, you know, they're running a mud deck, for instance, they will not be countering your things. That's not no. what mud does. And they kind of um, <laughs> no, they just don't. They're gonna just trample over you. That's what they're supposed yeah. to do. So, but decks are very <laughs> finely tuned in Legacy. They do what they're meant to do very, right. very well. They're lo usually looking to win in the very few first few turns yeah. of the game. Um, not always. There's obviously some other decks that do different things, but yeah, the majority of them, but, yeah. yeah, it's that's sort of mid range. So hmm. that's sort of a breakdown of what Legacy looks like at the moment. 
Um, most of these stats all taken from MTG Goldfish and MTG Top 8. Yeah. Uh, so if you are looking for current information, I would suggest looking there. Yes. Yeah. Um, great places. So where and how can you play Legacy? Well, if you're a professional player, coming very soon, like we mentioned, the Pro Tour. Exactly. Um, other than that, there are certain specific Legacy events mm -hmm. that happen now and then. Um, in the past, I didn't count towards ELO for qualifying for uh, uh, Pro Tours and Grand Prix. Um, however, I guess they might now. I believe well, they do. Well, actually, well, the ELO system's gone, technically, yeah. so let me let me say that. Um, now it's Planeswalker points, but yeah. uh, I can... Oh, I just remembered. I meant to write my little number down on my... Never mind. More on that later. You know that, that stinking <laughs> annoying number that everybody asks for when you go to like a a, a, a pre-release or oh. some sanctioned FNM or, or what have you? Your Planeswalker number, basically yeah, your, yeah. your magic social security. I never remember mine, and I have to call my LGS every time I'm somewhere different. Do you really? Yes, and I go, hey, what's my... Didn't they give you a little... Yeah, probably, but... I still have mine. Look, I'm not myself. From the one time I went to FNM. I'm just, I'm not myself if I'm not losing that card. So. That's fair. Okay. Or, or anything, really. If well, that makes sense. I mean, uh, but... Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> anyway. back to where to play. Um so, that's they did have, uh, very recently, a GP in Vegas. Mm. Uh, one of the events was actually Legacy. Yep. So they do host uh, sort of higher level tournaments mm -hmm. occasionally. You can also play at local game stores. However, it's a bit sparse. Um, it's not yeah. quite as, I mean, standards every Friday for the most part. Uh, Modern is much more widely played. It's things like that. Yeah. However, Legacy, you really have to have the play group set up beforehand and then right. go to the LGS and say, hey, let's set up events for this. Um, just because it's not a format that everybody can afford to play, and yeah, not, that's the not something thing. everybody wants to play, and that's right. okay. Right. Um, I do think that if people could afford it more, they absolutely would play it all the time. But, yeah, probably. <laughs> um, that's just personal opinion. But yeah, so it's not going to be as readily available to you in paper. Yeah. Uh, however, there are events online all the time, as always. So I mean, you can true, always yeah. play there. There's um, on team countless infinity leagues exactly and, and there's but. also variants of legacy in the way of legacy cubes uh That's which again true. are posted online uh in mtgo i know the cube i run is fairly similar to the legacy cube yeah um it's, it's not close. a perfect list or anything like that but it's very similar mm -hmm. and so you if you have somebody who has those cards talk to them about putting a cube together it's a really fun way to play mm -hmm. um, or just heck proxy it guys proxy uh, it. don't if you're if you're playing by just with a few friends, if you're testing a deck, anytime, don't feel bad about proxying. Ever. No, proxying no. is the best way to test something without investing. So exactly. Much in it. If you have a box of like eighty forests, <laughs> you can proxy a deck and see if it works. Yeah. Heck, you could make a vintage deck. Yeah. Right? Easily. I mean, just write the card name on the on the back mm -hmm. of the card or something like that, and just leave it up. My favorite thing is, and this is more expensive. I print the pictures of the cards. Yeah. Mostly because my handwriting is really really bad <laughs> so i did a thing one time where i actually had proxies yeah. made um from an actual oh. proxy you know somebody who actually made just yeah. proxies it wasn't like counterfeit it wasn't you know well, made for counter yeah it was, yeah. It was okay. literally just for proxying um and i did get the power nine solely to do a powered key power with, yeah um which was really really fun it's not that expensive. Um, it's a relatively cheap endeavor for some, because again, they're just doing printing costs and it's a piece of cardboard. It's not, you know. Um, sure. So even if it's not the best quality, it's a little bit better uh, yeah. than just sort of writing on the back of a card if you feel like doing something like that. Yeah, but yeah. again, it works just as well to write it. I mean. Right, exactly. <laughs> it's like it's com same yeah. thing. So it really yeah. doesn't matter, but it is a good way to sort of gain entry mm -hmm. into the format mm -hmm. for sure. Um, and so the point goes to how do you get good? And obviously playing, obviously practicing, proxying these decks and testing them is the right. best way. Um, another point that I would make uh, for Legacy and probably Vintage to be specific is watch a lot of already set up gameplay. Yeah, um, that's because, a really good one. Uh, you know, Modern and Standard, it obviously does not hurt to do that. You will learn a lot from that. However, because Legacy and Vintage specifically are so intricate, and there's so many interactions that you need to know. Mm -hmm. um, it helps to see it from both perspectives at the same time and know exactly while people are commentating, know what, what the other person's thinking mm -hmm. and know what the other person's planning for. Um, so watching that gameplay, getting a feel for it, seeing how cards interact and things like that, 
helps even more, I would say, here than anywhere else, um, except yeah. maybe vintage. So just something to think about. There's a lot of content out there on YouTube uh, that you can watch, uh, Twitch and stuff like that as well. So What is the... Is it not Team Draft Super League? Help me out. Like, There's Vintage Super League. That's what I was thinking. Um, of, but which is very good. Same thought process, yeah. though. Um, so you get the professionals, you get pros playing mm-hmm. matches and then commentating on different matches, and that it's been indispensable for me to watch. Yeah, absolutely. Watch professional top tier play. Um, it's really improved mm-hmm. my game. Um, really on the mental side, considering things. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, that, that was a great and point. I wouldn't no, have thought to make it. No, you're fine. I, and to the point that you just made, the fact that the pros themselves actually commentate on the gameplay, mm-hmm. it gives you a perspective not from somebody who's just sort of memorizing the cards and saying, they're playing this, they're playing this. It gives you the perspective of somebody who knows what those cards do, knows how that actually interacts with the opponent and says, okay, they have to be thinking about this line. And they will actually right. lay out a line for you that you never would have thought of. Yeah, um, no one better than us. Yeah, yeah. Oh. LSP is fun to listen to. Yeah. Um, so yeah. It's, well, it's kind of fun and not at the same time. <laughs> it's a little degrading sometimes because he's like, "All right, he's gonna do this," and then he does it. <laughs> or he's like, "Well, obviously he should leave up that force of will, or leave up you know some random Whatever thing, yeah. or maybe he should wait two turns on that because after two turns, that's the optimal time. Sure, like sure. two turns from now, clear. Yeah. Now." Don't do it. Even though he's got the mana, nothing on the other side of the board. Don't do it. Not yeah. the time. He like yeah. he, he knows so much. He's like he's gonna play out his blah blah blah, and mm-hmm. then that's gonna force Reed to do yeah. this and that, and then he'll have to counter it, which leaves him in a really bad position. And I'm like, <laughs> oh and, yeah, yeah, I guess you're right. Uh, t- <laughs> spoilers. <laughs> and not eighty percent of the time, that's what happens. Yeah, also. yeah. And um, another term that you will, or sort of phrasing that you'll hear a lot of in Legacy, and when we do talk about vintage, you'll hear it there a lot, is fighting over yes. an interaction. Yeah, um, that's a. Mm, so talk about that because you know, so in modern, for instance, or in standard, it's normally like, do I get to play this? If they have a counter, it's a no. End of story. However, because blue is such a prominent color, so many force of wills are running around. You get into sort of this bidding war over a card. Yeah. It's like I will put I'll I'll play my monastery mentor while I'm gonna force it. The other person says, Okay, how badly do I want this mentor? Yeah. Should I force it? Should I fluster storm? Like you have these options and so you get into this counter war on the stack and then you have to sort of go back and forth and resolve all this all the way back down. And so you can really fight over stuff. Yes. It and gets insane. And many games are won and lost that way uh, yeah absolutely right um judging when and how the best way to fight for your win cons yeah you know it, that becomes really tough yeah you're exactly um, right so likewise just things to think about yeah good um, tidbits yeah so i hope that this has been helpful to some people mm. um we i mean can't afford legacy um again i have a legacy cube ish uh, that is very similar, but it's obviously not constructed legacy. However, I do watch probably more legacy than almost any other format. Modern might huh. be a little higher, but I do really enjoy legacy. So um, those are my tidbits of information. Cool. Anything to add before um, we move off of that? No, I, I never, I won't say never, but I rarely watched the oldest formats um, until we started hanging out more right <laughs> i mean you got me into them man they're better formats sorry eh, i think modern is the best but... modern is the best in that it is fairly accessible to most people exactly and it's really powerful exactly um legacy Ish. is obviously well it's more powerful than standard right um legacy is obviously more expensive but more powerful and then vintage is all the way at the top yeah um, and then you have Commander doing a lot of things. Uh, <laughs> just somewhere. <laughs> pew, pew. If any um, of you saw uh, this week's Game of Thrones episode. Uh, oh, man. Game of Thrones. Sorry, guys. That's your Commander games. <laughs> um, Dracarys. <laughs> all right. All right. It was lit. Just doing this? Is a dragon. Okay. Nerd rant for a second. Oh god. Okay, here we go. Game of Thrones oh, H- HBO on. guys. If you're going to say Khaleesi, the mother of dragons, breaker of chains, has dragons as bibbits and actual dragons, 
Just, just give him two more legs. They made him wyverns, dude. Or wyverns, or however, however you say it. Just like Skyrim, by the way. These ain't dragons. Dragons got four legs, a tail, and wings. Mm -hmm. These scaly guys got two legs, two wings, mm -hmm. and a tail. They're missing limbs. They're 75% dragon. <laughs> Good? I'm done. All right. I just want to make sure you're okay. Do you need some water? No, I need dragons, man. <laughs> Gotta wait for the commander sets to come out. <laughs> Speaking of which, we need to do an episode on spoilers. For oh, that. buddy. They look sweet. Yeah, it Holy looks super fun. Crap. Wizards, cats, dragon. New oh, my. Mm, mm. Be still, my heart. Um, All right, more on that later. Yes, <clears throat> so very quickly, I just want to talk about our question of the week. Um, I'm not doing a countdown on this one. There are no yeah, winners. because it's We're favorites. just doing it's favorites. favorites. Sure. Uh, so just keep that in mind. And I'm only going to go through a few highlights here. Okay. Um, I think actually the one that did get the most, not that I did count, but just off the off the top of, or the first look, I should say, uh, Counterspell got quite a few votes. Uh, Counterspell being a favorite of classic a lot of people. Card. Classic blue. Just nope. Yeah, it's it's great. Uh, Ponder was up there, a lot of cantrips, things like that. Mana sure. Drain, which is one of my favorite Counterspells personally. Uh, Capsize is on there. Capsize. Stormcrow. You know. Hey. You know. It's the um, best card in Magic, dude. Yeah, of course. Um... Force of Will was on there. Don't say it like that. It is the best card in Magic. It is the best card in Magic. I'm being honest. I am too. Yeah. I scoop in front of a Stormcrow. Yeah, you should. If somebody plays Stormcrow, you've lost the game. Yeah. Good try. Try better next time. It's the Exodia of Magic. Yeah. Um, in Arcanus. One, in one package. Ar Arcanus. 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 I don't know. Um, I don't know that one. You don't know that one? Mm -mm. The Om... What is it? Omnipotent. You don't know that? Mm-mm. Uh, draw or tap it to draw a bunch of cards. It's just super good. Um, I've got one. I'll show it to you later. <laughs> okay. Um, he drawn crab. Hey, you know it's up. Turn to frog. Crab is pretty cool. Ah, uh, turn to frog. <laughs> Dude, my man, my yes. lady, my bro. Whoever said that? Who you're was my it? Favorite. Tristani. Mtg. Tristani. On Instagram. Way to be there. Uh, turn to frog is so fun. Slippery boggle. Also fun. Which counts? It's hybrid. Yeah. It uh, counts, cruel totally. ultimatum, which has blue in it, so you are correct. Uh, okay, I'll give you that. Polymorphous hey, Jest, which is an army of, it's army of Turn to Frogs. Uh, let's see, Cryptic Command, Jaces, a Everybody bunch of Jaces, Time Walk, Consecrated Sphinx, things like that. Um, Consecrated Sphinx is sweet. Yes, it's a very good card. We only it's, have one person, though, say Omniscience. That's Other fine. than you. Other than me? All right, well, Air 5. Yeah, you, that's, they, uh, it was Tim on, uh, YouTube. Tim, thank you for commenting. By Tim, the way, Tim, my man. Um, Alex, what did he say? Dismiss into dream. Alex, being our streamer, if you didn't know. Dismiss into dream. Uh, he's commander. He's only commander player. So, so right, it's a card nobody ever. Here's knows. what dismiss into dream does. Are you ready? Are you just figuring this out off the? Dismiss into dream. Okay. Six colorless, two blue. Mm -hmm. Um, put target spell. Thirtieth from the bottom. Okay. On opponent's library. Okay. Shuffle the top <laughs> half of their deck and the bottom half of their deck. And then play a mini game of magic. Okay. And if they cast that spell. This sounds like an unhinged card. Dismiss into dream is countered. <laughs> that sounds super terrible. Nah. No, I don't know what it does. I'm sure I'm sh when Alex listens to this, because I know he does, I'm gonna look it up. He's gonna comment down below on the YouTube video. And How close let was us I, Alex? <laughs> Nowhere near. <laughs> Dismiss into dream. Is that the one? It's probably that makes everything illusions or something like that. I don't think so. it is. Bruh, come on. How did I guess that? Um, there is a com a combo That's with amazing. that and like Zephyr Charge where you can. Give a creature flying with Zephyr Charge for like two mana, and then it just dies. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. It's a like jank combo, but it works in Commander. Dismiss into Dream. Like, oh man, yeah, it's, it's such a bad card though. I mean, it work, it works I, I in promise Commander. you, Alex would have like such a huge counter argument to that. Yeah, here's what it works with: Electricery. <laughs> It makes electricery a a sweeper. A one mana sweep, two mana sweeper. That's pretty yeah. cool. 
Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. Um, it also does work with Zephyr Charge because it's awesome. Anyway, I'm sure that's adorable, but like, I mean, that was a standard combo, I believe, at one point. I mean, it was terrible because that's this seven is... mana though. Well, that's man. the thing. That's a standard and then combo. Two mana to kill things. So you're dead by turn. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Whatever. Anywho, <laughs> we move on. <laughs> Alex never fails to trigger me with his card. Oh, I know. Card choices. Alex is Buddy, one of the best and most argumentative people. I love you, Alex. Your birthday's coming up soon too, man. It is. Um, Look, I love you, and I will never not have magic debates with you. I'm excited for the debate. Oh, it's going to be fun. That will ensue when we talk with him very soon. What's your goal card? Oh, yeah. My main. Um, well, first, we should mention our sponsor, Grand Slam. Uh, Comics and Collectibles in Rock Hill, South back. Carolina. Website, as well as Facebook, are in the description below. Um, ooh, nice card. So, okay. huge shout out to them. Thank you very much, guys. And, uh, you know, we always All appreciate right. it. Um, my goal card, though, is Fraying Sanity. My goal card, Torment of Hailfire. That That's land. I don't want that. Oh, this is land, too. All right. Uncommons. This is it. What do I mm, want mm, out of this? Mm, go ahead. Mm, you go mm. first. Whoopah! No. Oh, I like that card, though. This is sweet. Nimble Obstructionist. Flash and Flying, a 3 1 uh, for 3. When you cycle Nimble Obstructionist, counter target activated or triggered ability you don't control, you cycle it for its mana cost as well. Yeah, I love the versatility here. Yeah, super uh, cool. 3-1 flash with flying in limited is awesome. Yep. Um, shout out to, oh, what's that card? Some Drake back from Innistrad. Uh, that's basically Aven Reed Stalker. Um, but yeah, this is way better. Um, cool. Happy with that? Is that your, is that your pick? I should say. Oh uh, yeah, it absolutely is. Um, yeah. The the options there. I also got a braid, which was the nice card we commented on. Yeah. Um, yeah. The options there is that's a very good versatile card. So yeah, my pick for sure. Awesome. So my pack is looking very slim without looking at the rare. Um, there's really not much that I care about. So I want you to get um. Uh, what's what's a crappy rare? I want you to get Hostile Desert. Why? I don't know. I'm just around it. really out. mean. I got a Hostile Desert. I got some other weird desert. I need you to get a desert. Here. You need me to get a desert? Don't All right. Down. So here's hoping it's either a Frank Sanity or a desert. And don't be a tease. I'm okay with Frank Sanity. All right. I'm not, do this. Don't be a tease. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, it's the pick. The Locust God. <laughs> that is not a desert. That's not a desert. It's That's pretty. way better than a desert like in every art. way. Dude, I, I mean, that's the pick. I'm not going to talk about the rest of the pack. I wish these were full art. That oh, art, man. That art full art would be... Yeah, that would be so nice. Man. God, such a good card. I'm so excited about it. Yeah, Aha. that's nice. Good job. Thanks. Good job opening a pack. I do what I can. Way to do that. It was well. really hard at one point. All right. Um, yeah, well. <laughs> good, um, uh, good episode. Yeah, thank good you again to our sponsor, talk. Grand Slam. We really appreciate it. Um... This weekend, guys, we're planning to do a cube. I think the plan is to try and record it. Um, that oh, is going only that on is Patreon. Exciting. Yes, this is our first. This is our first attempt at this. Um, if it doesn't work, that's okay. We'll do it next time. But uh, the plan is to give it a shot, try and give it a decent recording, edit it all together, and then get it up on Patreon probably sometime next week. Yeah. Um, so if you are not already on Patreon, I would suggest you go there and check it out. If you um, are interested in that cube stuff, some, yeah, some live action gameplay. What we'll probably do is have a webcam or a phone set up on a singular person's packs so they can actually see and follow along with those picks. And then we'll just sort of intermediately record some gameplay. So we'll try and get that all put together and set up. Um, and we'll update you and let you know how that goes probably in the next episode on Monday. I'm so, pumped about that. I'm really I'm, excited about keeping. It's going to be fun. We're having our friend Andrew, who helped us out with these My cups, man. Um, and these shirts. And these shirts. Uh, and, yeah, oh. he's done a lot. <laughs> yeah. I know. God, if I'm going to find it and wear it there, just to say, Andrew, I care. <laughs> I'm wearing it. I'm wearing it. They're awesome keeping. shirts. I They're love really them. They're really nice. Um, ah. We're looking to, if people are interested in these shirts, let us know. Um, we'd yeah. love to actually print more and get them to you guys, either we've, in a giveaway or by selling them. We've got some ideas for some um, It Resolves swagger. Yeah, so just some thoughts. If you would like to have your own shirt, let us know. Yeah. Um, but outside of that, yeah, I think that's going to be it. Um, anything else to add? Cool episode. Legacy is always fun. Love you guys. Yeah. That's what I'll add. You guys add. are the best. Seriously, 
I'm gonna rant for a second. This community is fairly small as of right now. We're only a few months in. True. true. However, you guys have shown incredible support. Yeah. Um, on and Instagram. And interest. And interest. Which yeah. Is great. A hundred percent. You guys are doing the most. It's awesome. On Instagram, we've got something like 800 followers right now. We hit yeah. 800, I believe, just the other day. That's um, pretty good. On YouTube, we've got something like 65 uh, subscribers, along with a very constant viewer base. It's not many, but it's a few, and that's what we care about. Um, the more we get, obviously, the better, and the more useful, hopefully, these episodes will become, because we can do them so. a little more regularly. <laughs> um, a little, but, little better. Yeah, a little better, put some more quality into it, and that's the goal. We want to we wanna build this up, hopefully make this a solid community. Yeah. Um, for everybody, newcomers uh, and veterans of the game. That's the, I mean, that's the draw to me, and that's what we said starting out, right? Yeah, we wanted, absolutely. We wanted everybody to get on board um, and feel welcome, and like they took something away, yeah. if not just had a good time. Yeah, um, exactly. You know what felt really fulfilling? Um, the first episode in this little, this series mm-hmm. we did, uh, the dude talked about his, his son and him getting into magic. That was Tim, actually, the one that commented Tim! omniscience. So, My man. shout out to you. My man. Um, yeah, that felt really good. Yeah. yeah. Um, we can we can help bring someone uh, hope, a little more understanding. Yeah, he posted game. a comment basically just stating that he and his son recently started playing Magic, and he yeah. really appreciated the standard breakdown video. He said it was very helpful to him, um, and that's what we like to hear. Sweet. I mean, that's that's, that's awesome cool. to us. That's exactly why we're doing this. Other than it just being a fun thing that we enjoy, yeah, uh, and we like to share together. So it's it's a good excuse to go hang out with with Kevin. Yeah, um, it's which really is the weird. only thing keeping this friendship together. Absolutely. Um, this is all we talk about and yeah. all we do that's basically it yeah we cut the recording and i disappear I, yeah no he, I he leaves um yeah. i have to take all this down by myself yeah which you can't see there's two lights here move table do all that stuff but yeah I'm considering he just like leaves. flipping a table right when i go just to really that much just to be mean hmm. he also rips my cards in half every time every single every time. time no matter what it is um even this when he got my will be out. ripped in half I'll do it uh, right as now. soon as we, I will murder you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, uh, and scene. Yes, that's great, <laughs> guys. Thank you as always for sticking around through the rants, through the content, through whatever that just was. <laughs> guys, we're getting out of here. My name is Kevin. My name's Quill. Quill? <laughs> <laughs> Did I say Quill? Yes. This has been it. Resolves. Quill. <laughs>